we're going to start off as a, I'll say, a beginner uh, level, getting into you know, how we we work in uh, industrial design. And uh, some of the topics are, are covered in that uh, workspace tutorial, so check that out. That's, uh, that's a quick one. This is going to be a little bit more uh, in depth than uh, than that presentation, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the begin uh, you know at the beginning. I don't know how into painter everybody is, so we got if we have some beginners on the line, I'm gonna uh, start how I would start up the uh, a painter drawing, or if I was to start from scratch with Corel Painter, uh, the first thing I would do, and this goes for industrial design, um, if you were to first fire up Painter. Uh, and for an industrial designer, this is uh, pretty important. Um, under your preferences, there's something called brush tracking. And this is going to be, hey, you see the scratch pad opened up here. This is going to be something that uh, you, know, you basically lay down a little bit, of a, little bit of a curve there, showing how you work. And for industrial design, you usually work in fairly fast strokes. So I'll, I'll usually lay down a, a pretty heavy, fast stroke that uh, sets your samples uh, you know, fairly far apart, as you see how how slowly. If you were to do a slow line, uh, you've got a a lot of samples taken up uh, over that entire line. So quick, fast strokes, and what that's going to give you is nice, clean lines as you uh, as you draw. And uh, since we're focusing on uh, Painter X3 today, uh, I'm going to uh, start with a couple of fun little uh, little elements that uh, I find particularly interesting in this uh, in this program. And w one that's a particular interest for industrial designers <laughs> and uh, something that uh, would be more even useful when you're dealing with wheel design is the uh, kaleidoscope tool. I've done uh, quite a few wheel designs in the past and I wish I had this tool uh, around back then because this is uh, this is pretty fun. Uh, there's a both a mirror plane which is left to right mirror which you can use that all over the place but uh, the kaleidoscope tool is what I'm going to use here. I'm going to uh, start by doing a, uh, a motorcycle design. And uh, I figure that would be a, a fun thing to sketch on today. And uh, let's see. I'm going to start with doing a, doing a wheel. But uh, before, I, well, before I do that wheel, I'm going to tell you where things usually start out with, with uh, motorcycle designs. I rarely ever go at a, a design from, from scratch uh, out of nowhere. There's usually, if you're doing a production, you're working on a production bike, you're usually given hard points by an engineering team or a uh, marketing team, depending on the class of uh, motorcycle you're working on or, or vehicle. There's going to be things like a, a wheelbase, uh, tire size, wheel diameter, engine configuration, and especially these things are important when you're, uh, when you're designing motorcycles. And uh, this is basically where I'm going to start, is by laying out all the components in like a 2D uh, side view drawing. You can see I've got uh, I've got the wheels, the basics of the wheels laid out, uh, some components of the engine, uh, you know, foot point. Let me uh, let me call these out. You know, you've got your your foot controls. Uh, oops, you've got your you've got your foot controls. Ooh, got, <laughs> got still got the kaleidoscope working. Um, you know, you know, I'll get into that here in a minute. But um, you know, you've got your your like I said, main the main hard points. You know, you've got your your seat area. You got your everybody can see where the engine is, uh, hand controls, the front fork, the rake angle. This is all this is all going to be important stuff when we're when we're dealing with it. So uh, again, this could be coming from uh, the engineering team who's developing the the frame, or uh, you could just be working in a specific class of bike. So for example, I I drew uh, took these hard points off an existing product. This would be like a uh, a cruiser, and uh, Basically, start start from there. So, an industrial designer is gonna gonna take these hard points and uh, basically fill in the blank to hopefully make a, uh, a nice, exciting uh, product. So, we'll start uh, as I had, had mentioned with the uh, with the wheel. And uh, you know, before I get into that, another you know tool that I that I really do enjoy is the uh, as an industrial designer and uh, others may not may not use this as much. Is the uh, is the snap to curves feature, and uh, let's see. You first have to start out with a curve or a circle or something like that. I'm going to do just a stroke. I'm going to take this stroke and just so I can uh, know what it is, turn it green. 
and uh, file, edit preferences, the general. Let's uh, wait for that window to pop up real quick. Paint hidden shapes. You can see under just the general, align brush to path tolerance. Let's kick that up to 50 pixels. And uh, paint hidden shapes. This is uh, this is a pretty a pretty fun feature, and when it was first introduced in Painter 10, I about I about lost it because I uh, I use it so much now. It's uh, it's really really nice tool. But what that allows you to do is create to either you know it can be any shape. It can be regular curves. In this case, I've got an oval for what's going to become the wheel. And uh, if you press Alt and Shift or just uh, hit the uh, hit this guy align to path, uh, it's going to snap your your brush strokes to that curve. And uh, if you're trying to nail that that perfect curve, if you're obviously doing a uh, obviously doing a circle or a wheel or something like that, like I'm doing here, that uh, that can make a pretty big difference. And uh, you know, just for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make another another curve here for you. If you've got an, got to really nail that curve, if you're working on a tight illustration, uh, just like I've done with the oval, you make a path or you make a shape, you hide it, you go to a uh, you go to a layer. You kind of got to remember where that where that curve is. And uh, you know it really allows you to, to lay down that uh, stroke perfectly, and uh, you, you know you still use still have all the pressure sensitivity and brush control as you as you normally do, but your stroke is going to be locked to that curve. And uh, like I'd mentioned, pretty uh, pretty important when it comes down to, to nailing that uh, that perfect highlight on uh, along a, on an edge and uh, working very tightly. But this is uh, again going back to the uh, kaleidoscope feature, which Oh man! Back in the day when I was doing a lot of wheels, this would have been <laughs> this would have really been a cool tool to have. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, it's a kaleidoscope, and when you click on that, it's going to give you some options. It's going to give you the number uh, of segments, uh, angle of rotation. You can hide the kaleidoscope feature if you want. And again, switch it between some uh, uh, mirror or you know, kaleidoscope. Turning it on and off is that little toggle switch there. So right now I'm going to hide it and uh, and show you how show you how this works. And if anybody has any questions throughout the, uh, the webinar, feel free to uh, feel free to pop in and I'll uh, I'll answer them as we go. But uh, this is a this is really a fun way to do it. You know what? I want this set to five, not three. So I'm just going to back it off a little bit and go back up to here and go instead of three, go five, and that'll give me. I'm basically designing for a, uh, a five-spoke wheel, and you can see how quickly you can start uh, doing some some wheel designs. And not only quickly, but you're seeing the wheel develop in real time, um, and you can see the whole the whole thing kind of come together. Whereas before, you would sort of have to draw one spoke and then the next spoke. If I was to, or you know, if I was doing, uh, I've done a lot of wheel designs starting you know front views like this, starting off in Illustrator. And uh, and doing, uh, you know, designing one spoke, and then once you got that spoke design, you're uh, you're going to array it around a uh, uh, you know, the center point, and then you can finally see what the what the wheel looks like as it's uh, as it's all done. But by a, by being able to have this kaleidoscope feature actively doing it, you're able to see this this thing start from from scratch, and as you as you draw it, the whole wheel just comes into uh, comes into place. So. Really neat feature. Again, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure beyond something like this. What uh, I mean, you could probably make some pretty wild uh, patterns, but um, but this just you know, for for wheel, it's, it feels like it's just made for for designing wheels, and uh, you know, fairly quickly you can you can design a, a pretty you know, pretty intense thing going on here. And uh, you said I, you know, I'm drawing basically a fraction of this thing as a as a circle, and uh, and going from there. But uh, you know, another point. If you ever want to, you know, break out and do something else, just make sure to uh, you hit the kaleidoscope key and turn it. Little toggle switch there, turn it off. Um, and just so you know that this is uh, I am using to sketch with. I'm using the Real 2B pencil, which is uh, kind of one of my my favorite uh, brushes to go to in uh, in Painter X3. I think that was the real the real brush was or the real 2B pencil. I think was introduced in. Painter 12, and uh, it's uh, it's been a really fun one. What I like about it is that you can you can not only get you know it's 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 tilt sensitive, so you you 
have the stylus straight up and down, it's going to draw a, uh, you know, a nice thin line. You lean it over on its side, and it's going to give you a, uh, a much broader tip like a, you know, like a sharpened pencil would. And uh, what's nice about that is that it gives you a little bit grainier feel, uh, give it a more sketchy quality, more hand, you know, hand sketch, real world sketch quality. But uh, it also gives you the ability to do some, some fairly quick shading. You saw I did some, just some loose shading right here without having to do uh, you know, more time consuming cross hatching. And uh, I feel it, you can work a little bit looser and a little bit quicker uh, by, by doing that. But again, there's a, there's a quick wheel. I'm going to turn my uh, I'm going to turn my hard points back on and you know, kind of drop this wheel underneath the hard points. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, remove the center, center part of this wheel where my, my brake caliper is, is kind of hanging out. And uh, I just, for, for all my eraser needs, I pretty much use the, uh, the standard eraser. I don't, uh, I don't modify that too heavily. But um, that's a pretty, pretty standard go-to brush. And again, this, uh, my workspace can be, can be downloaded off the, uh, off the Corel site. And uh, it will have all these, all these brushes, all these brushes in it. And uh, you know, if, again, if you want to go back and, and spice that wheel design up, you can just go back and turn the kaleidoscope back on. Uh, and just let me make sure that's still still there. Yep, everything's still in the in the right spot. And uh, turn that back on, and you can say, well, I want a little bit more meat around that uh, around that brake caliper, or or play around with the design a little bit more if you want. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and go with that and. Just for the sake of time, let's let's duplicate this uh, this wheel to the to the rear as well. And uh, one of the things I'll do is uh, adjusting one of the few adjustments to the hotkeys that I make is the uh, is the free transform tool. I'm going to cut and paste that so I get the uh, I get that on its own layer. I just control control T. I think it was control alt T before, but control T is what I set it to because I uh, just got used to that over uh, over time. I'm just used to that in Photoshop, I think, is is the main the main deal. But uh, that's what's nice about painters, you can adjust all your all your hotkeys and change it to whatever you whatever you want as long as you can accept the uh, the definition change. So anyway, some, some quick wheels there. It doesn't, doesn't take more than a minute to, uh, to do some wheels, and uh, they end up looking, looking pretty cool. So now the, the, uh, the fun part is, uh, is filling all this in. And uh, again, I would, I would use the same, the same 2D brush to, to kind of have at it. Now, depending on what, uh, what you want to do, this is, again, where you could start having a lot of fun. But uh, I spent a little bit of time last night uh, cooking up a cooking up a sketch. I figured you guys would want to see a little bit more than just a, uh, a sketching demo. So let's uh, do some blackouts and let's fire up the, uh, the main body sketch here. So I've got this on, uh, I've got this on different layers here. My, uh, my hard points that I'm, I'm not really going to change. And I've got my main, main body and then a layer in between that kind of blocks out what uh, what you wouldn't see above the uh, above those layers, and uh, you can see in this in this rear wheel area here, there's some some spots where this is uh, kind of showing through over my my rear cover or the uh, the belt, the rear belt, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and move that kaleidoscope feature over there and do some some features on that rear belt. Oh, the rear belt is covered. Let's see kaleidoscope. Got to show it. And to move the kaleidoscope around, there's a little circle in the center. You would just grab it by that, that circle, drag it back to wherever you wanna wherever you wanna do, grab your brush and uh, and have at it. Just make sure you're working on the you're working on the right layers actually. I'm gonna do one layer on top of that. And uh, kind of work work within there. Again you can 
just it's just nice to be able to see in real time the any any kind of radial pattern wheels or sprockets or gears uh, happening at the at the same time. So not only cuts down any any kind of uh, any kind of guesswork, but again, if you have to go, let's turn that off. If you have to go erase, just make sure to turn off the uh, <laughs> just make sure to turn off that uh, kaleidoscope feature. Because if you've got it hidden, you really don't realize that it's on, and then you're, then you're in the middle of it. But again, this this whole sketch was done with that real 2B pencil. Uh, you can see the the shading and some of the hatching. But again, uh, I do like I do like this pencil for the ability to do some some fairly quick shading uh, if if need be. So what I'm gonna do here is just clean that clean it up a little bit. But you know, for for a starting point, and you know, depending on how far you want to take a sketch uh, for industrial design, this uh, this may be may be presentable for a first pass, uh, just to get the just get some client feedback, or before you spend the the time and the effort in getting into uh, into heavy shading and illustrating, uh, you may want to take this this sketch and, and get some feedback on it, which is uh, typically how we'll, we'll work in the studio. I'll, uh, I'll get a design to this level. Maybe I'll take it a little bit further, which is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into next, and, uh, and maybe get some feedback before you start putting a whole lot of time into it, because uh, you know, time is really the, really the king. You want to you get in and out of these sketches as quick as you can, because that means more. You can, you can test out more designs and uh, have, have a little bit more fun. Right now, I've drawn that little sprocket, that little back uh, back sprocket, on top of my main body sketch. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and collapse those layers into one, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename the sketch. And let's see, I can get rid of those shapes. I don't think I'll need those anymore. Get my hard points on the layer, the rear wheel. I'll probably Sorry to interrupt. We do have a question if you have time to answer one. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, this question is, is there a way to do concentric circles, like concentric oval selections in Photoshop? Uh, let's see, concentric circles. Uh, I don't believe so. That'd be, a, that'd be an, interesting, an interesting feature. Um, if I'm making concentric, uh, concentric circles, like basically what you would see, what you see here with these wheels, uh, making those, uh, let's see, though these are a little off because they're, I was matching up to the, uh, the photograph I was working on has perspective on it. But uh, yeah, if I'm making if I'm making circles like that, let me. Uh, it's a, a good thing. Yeah, I'm just basically popping in a uh, popping in a circle and then duplicating and uh, and scaling that to get the uh, to get the uh, circles. But that might be an interesting feature to. Uh, to have in there, unless I just uh, <laughs> unless it's got it, I just don't know about it. But uh, you know, Painter is a pretty pretty intense program, and uh, you know, for industrial design, I only you know probably use a a, a fraction of it. And uh, you know, my my tool set is is you know fairly basic, but it can uh, you know you can get into some pretty detailed illustrations with just these uh, just this set of uh, of uh, you know, working materials as, as far as pencils, charcoals, uh, airbrush, you can uh, you can get pretty you can get pretty intense with it. But uh, yeah, any any questions anybody has, just uh, just shoot them out and we'll we'll answer them as we go. But uh, we do have one more that just popped in. Um, sorry to interrupt you again. No, uh, yeah, go ahead. Is it possible to do directional wheels in the kaleidoscope tool? Directional wheels. Let's let's give it a try. Let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop open the kaleido kaleidoscope tool. And I'm gonna move it. Let's see, I'm gonna move it somewhere where we can we can play around a little bit you know, up here in some some of the the empty space. Let's see, it's most likely is if you if you see the um, basically going to be since you're since you're working in that 
in that direction, you're pretty much going to be duplicating uh, everything in, in you know, multiple. So if you're going to do it in one, it's going to directly mirror it across. It not only duplicates it, but it mirrors it along a point. That tool is going to work the best for, for straight wheels just because it mirrors along a, uh, a center line. But you can, you can play around with it and, uh, and have some fun. I definitely, even though it's, it may not be the best for, for wheels that have twist to them, I would, uh, I would definitely, uh, definitely recommend just playing around with it. So I've got this sketch on a, a number of different layers here, and I'm going to start to uh, start to drop some, some color on this guy here. I'm going to go ahead and work underneath the sketch layer. Set this to uh, to multiply because there's some stuff behind it, and I'll use this. It's called a uh, flat airbrush right here. I've got uh, my detail detail airbrush, which is really an unmodif is the unmodified detail airbrush that uh, that comes standard with there. But uh, it's great for just real smooth, uh, you know, gradation. And then I've got a, a custom flat airbrush, which is basically that same thing but modified to have a, a hard edge. And the only real difference between that is this, uh, if you go to your dab profiles here, the dull profile or the one pixel edge. And uh, this is what I'll use for, for basically blocking in, uh, blocking in color. So I'm going to focus right now. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with the wheels just to, just to show, show off something. And I'm going to, now I could, if I, if I wanted to, come in here and sort of mask mask things out, but I'm going to go into the wheel, I'm going to go into the negative spaces, and sort of do, do all this area here. But um, when I'm usually doing these, these loose sketches, I don't do as much masking uh, with the selection tool as, uh, as I would for a, a tighter illustration where you're going to have, you're going to remove all those sketch lines and, uh, and work a lot tighter. And uh, I don't know if you know if there's beginners who are maybe new to Painter. I will uh, I'll show you something as, that has to do with the uh, the selection tool, or the uh, as far as making shapes and paths. Let's uh, let's go ahead and make it like a circle here. Shapes you can convert that to a selection, or you convert it to a you know convert it to a layer. Let's go to convert to a selection. So I can go ahead and and work work within that just like a normal selection would. It's like you can feather that selection, you know, you can give it a, you know, a couple of pixel feather uh, just to make it give it a nice soft radius. I'm going to go ahead and hide that selection. And uh, you know you can work within that. There's there's no you know nothing too nothing too crazy about uh, about doing that. And it could save you some time if you're really going to work within a work within an area. But uh, you can also go onto that selection and save selections. New. I'm going to call that just sphere. You can replace, add, subtract from, or intersect with. So you can play with uh, with, with what all that means. Uh, let's go ahead and make another other selection right here. And uh, select, save that selection. I'll call that uh, oval. So, oops. Select load selection. So you can now take that original sphere. You can replace it or add it to the selection. Subtract, intersect with. I'm gonna go add it to. So now, as as you would imagine, you can uh, you can start doing uh, intersecting selections that way. And that was a question that was asked to me uh, recently, if uh, how to to work with selections if you're doing doing tight renderings like this. And uh, that would be how it's done if you wanted to save some time by saving selections and uh, if you if you know you're really gonna do be working on a tight rendering, uh, that's one of the uh, one of the keys. And another neat uh, neat feature here, let's see if I go back to my what layer was I working on there? That's that. I'm looking for the let's go up a little bit. Should be layer five. It's got the the gray tone on it. 
if you're one of the indispensable tools when you're when you're doing this kind of stuff is the uh, preserve transparency feature. And uh, again, Photoshop has this. I think it's called Lock Pixels or something like that. But uh, it uh, basically allows you to whatever you've painted. It kind of creates. It's kind of like an auto masking feature. Um, there, there's there's two ways you can kind of go about this. And I will show you here. Let's say I want to work within. I just laid down a bunch of a bunch of gray tone here. I kind of want to work within that. There's this little little padlock icon that says preserve transparency. So what that means is I will only be able to draw within the pixels that are on that layer. So this won't work on the uh, this won't work on the canvas. But uh, if you're working on it's your own individual layer, uh, I'll make I'll do something that makes it look a little bit more a little bit more dramatic. Okay, so there there you can see really how this works. It, uh, it's kind of like an auto masking feature, and so I can quickly come in here and do some, uh, you know, some some basic uh, some basic shading on this wheel, and and start by start by going about it going about it that way. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to, if you say, well, I, I like I want to be able to do more, but I don't want to, you know, I've done some complex shading, but I don't want to interfere with uh, with what I've done. You can also take that and uh, let's see. you can also take that layer, uh, kind of right click on it, and then hit select layer content, and that will select those same pixels. So now with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide that selection. So I've got everything there selected. So now I can turn preserve transparency off. I can go to a new layer, and uh, very quickly I've kind of created a little a little mask for myself that, uh, oops, let's go. Created a little mask for myself that I can work on top of, work on top of everything else. So I'm gonna, since I've got this on a multiply layer and I'm just laying down my, my shading tones doing that, uh, cause a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue with my, just the layering I've done my sketch in. So, I'm going to leave that preserve transparency on and kind of just work work the sketch. Now, if I had a uh, if I had a circle right there, I could have could have done that fairly quickly just by snapping to it. But uh, you know, let's go ahead and just for fun, let's turn that uh, kaleidoscope feature back on. Gotta grab it. If you want to add some cool, let's add some cool tread onto this thing. I'm going to go back down to that wheels layer. It's going all the way from there. So you can quickly go in there and add some, add some fun, uh, fun tread if you wanted to. But that'd be something more for like a radial, radial pattern. But uh, another cool way of doing that. I do enjoy that scale feature for for wheels, as you can see. So that's the you know this is the basics of uh, blocking things in. Again, just using that uh, that hard airbrush. Be selected, have that still have that selected, and just going back in here and uh, and blocking things out real quick. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but this is where you're going to start to think about uh, about what your color palette is going to be, and just uh, you know, blocking out the uh, blocking out the tones. Does anybody have a uh, particular color that they like that they want to see see rendered up? You can chime in in the in the chat box if you uh, if you have a particular color. Red, green, blue, charcoal. Just don't say pink. I don't know if the I'm at work and uh, I don't know if the guys at work could see me drawing a, a pink First bike. I thought Eric is yellow. I'll see some yellow. You picked one of the uh, one of the toughest colors to render. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can thank Tim Allen for that one. <laughs> cool. And when it uh, when it comes to to doing color, um, this is going to be a pretty basic. Uh, it's going to be a pretty basic sketch, but uh, having some some good reference uh, on the they'll be working with. We're going to have uh, you know red. This uh, cool red tail light piece here. Let's drop that drop that in, and uh, 
I'm going to I'm going to focus on the uh, on the main body here, and I'm going to kind of leave the leave the wheels out of it. But I'm going to go in, and this is where this is also important where you start to block out. Uh, you start to think about you know the, the the main overall read of the to be to be matte, or do I want it to be to chrome and shiny? In this case, I uh, I kind of like the shape of the of the frame that surrounds the engine more than the uh, the engine shape itself. The engine's kind of a standard standard engine shape so I'm just basically working within working within my lines to get uh, to get that going but uh, let's see I want a little bit even a little bit more read there so again just real real quick and, and dirty just you know blocking in color and uh, this is where the, the real form of the bike is going to start start taking shape. Using that, uh, using that flat airbrush to, to go pretty to go pretty quick, and the uh, the seats I'll go with a uh, I'll go with a dark a dark leather as well. And, uh, you know, just you can you can clean this up later. So you're just you're just trying to get the uh, the gist of of the uh, the bike and the colors because you're going to come in and, and start rendering the heck out of this thing. Little, little bit so all these uh, all these little little covers here you're going to determine what's uh, what's going to be your your main read and then what's going to be this, the secondary panels that are going to be kind of blacked out and are more are more covers than than anything else and uh, you start to start to see the the design of the bike uh, to develop a little bit more and just let's see, we've got this uh we got this windshield up here. We'll do kind of a, a blue tinted windshield that's also, you know, some kind of combination between windshield and uh and headlight headlight cover. Don't know exactly what's what's going on in there, but it could be cool. Just using the select function tool to, to grab colors I already have and uh and pop them in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cover as, as much of this stuff up as we as we can. So I'm going to add my add my yellow. Now, if you wanted to, you could uh, you could work within you know your your own separate layers if you if you wanted to do that here. Actually, I'm not going to do that piece. Of yellow. This is kind of a it's kind of a front and center. Front and center yellow. Yellow piece here, and uh, oops. sometimes when you're rotating the canvas, um, which is a uh, you press Shift bar and Alt, if you try to snap back, uh, oh, I'll get into this here in a second. It's just block, fairly standard, just blocking that in. Uh, you snap back to your normal position just by just by tapping the uh, the canvas. But if you're if you're drawing, you don't really pick up your uh, pick up your pen enough, it will uh, it will continue drawing even after you snap back. So it's uh, it's kind of kind of strange. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and plop this in just to see what it just to see what it looks like. And again, this is where you're you're seeing the the bike come to uh, come to form. So. Could be something like that. This is a this is a naked bike with just some uh, some very minimal minimal fairings on it, but uh, the majority of the of the design is kind of this this really cool frame. So this is at, at this point of the uh, of the sketch is where you can start to determine how far you're going to uh, you're going to take it. Are you going to do a you know just a basic sketch, or are you going to do a, a full blown full blown illustration with this thing? And uh, for me, I'm just going to stick to the sketch. I don't do as many as many wild and crazy illustrations uh, as I, as I used to because you know time the time to do that is uh, can start getting can start getting kind of tight. So most of the time most of my time is spent doing doing looser work like this. And if it's uh, if the project calls for it, we can take it to a uh, 
we can take it to a high polish. But uh, for this, we're just going to work, kind of work underneath the lines. All the all the sketch lines, all these lines are still going to be there. And you can see how you know, quickly the uh, the main shapes and colors are are blocked in. And uh, let's see. I'm going to start working again, working underneath those lines to uh, to start you know blocking in some some uh, some shading here. So. You can either use your uh, that that same flat airbrush, and you can start rendering with that, or you can use the soft airbrush if you want. But I'm going to start defining some of the uh, some of the colors uh, just just with that. And this is where you're going to start start rendering. Obviously, I picked a, a light source coming up up top from the middle, and uh, just going in here and uh, oops. Okay, let's see. Because I'm working, I did this in a way to, to kind of show off uh, how how I work. But uh, because of the layering I've done, you see, I'm working on top of that of that engine uh, stuff when I do my my lighter tones. So what I what I will want to do here is uh, is I'm going to do some some magic here. Let's, uh, let's take that sketch. Let's see, I think it was layer two was my, my mask. I'm going to do select layer content and go down to my hard points and clear that out. So I don't need I don't really need layer two anymore. So D. Because I'm going to get all my lines on on one layer next. Okay, just make sure that's all that's all good and layered up nice. So I want hard points. See my wheels. I probably want all my wheels on the same same lines layer. I'm just going to grab all these collapse layer, and there we go. All my all my sketch lines are now are now on the same layer. So whatever I do underneath that is uh, is going to be underneath it, whether it's light or dark. Let's see. Oops. I don't want to delete my sketch lines. Okay. So we already see the uh, bike sort of taking shape. And if you want to come in here and just start to define some, oops, and start to define some, some crude lighting effects. Some some light to dark on the uh, on the basic and overall overall sh just kind of laying that uh, laying that on top and then you can you can do one of two things. Let's say I want to work within the lines and I've got everything everything blocked out. And I obviously don't have the rear wheel blocked out, but um, let me collapse all these layers here real quick. Not layer two because that's from that's from earlier. These should all be. So I don't know what's on layer four. All right, these three. Let's collapse these. So just to save some time, I'm going to go ahead and let's like let's say I had my whole bike blocked out. Go ahead and go select layer content. I'm going to select save selection. Let's call it the bike. Control Shift H. So whatever I do from now on is going to be within those bounds. So I can work fairly quickly and I don't have to worry about erasing out uh, a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of overdrawing. Again, just a quick way of making of making some some masks that uh, that don't take too much time. You can go in and start blocking in where where you know that, that color is going to be. Now I'd mentioned uh, I'd mentioned yellow, yellow being one of the one of the tougher tougher colors to render. I don't usually draw on yellow that much, um, usually because it doesn't give you the the flop like a like a bright red or something would. But uh, it is definitely definitely fun to look at. And uh, one of the things I'll do whenever I'm starting to, to illustrate bike 
And uh, a lot of the times you can do this with the, uh, the color mixer if you want to set up uh, this beforehand. Is I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. Just for funsies, I'm going to go to Google. Type in yellow car. And so you'll find a lot of fun, fun photo reference of, of how the flop on a car is handled. And uh, when I talk about flop, I, I'm talking about this, this highlight and how that transitions down into the darks. So this, uh, this particular Kia here has a, uh, let's, uh, let's pop that open, open full screen. Of course, this is uh, gray huge image which is uh, eh, it's not a bad not a bad deal but uh, from this image I'll know I'll be able to sample the highlights all the way down to some fairly dark representations of yellow and that's what you want to you want to make sure you get you get right is that that bright to dark because you don't want it to get too too muddy and uh, yellow can definitely uh, definitely do that yeah I got yeah when you're picking your reference images you also want to think about uh, you know what kind of lighting you're going to be doing. If I'm, uh, if I'm talking about studio lighting, yeah, it's a yellow car wallpaper. Yeah, why not? File open. Okay, active projects. Let's go. Let's Webinar. Let's pop that. Pop that sucker on open. So just having that off in the off in the background. I know there's a. There is a, a new tool in Painter 13 that allows you to open a little uh, a little reference window. But I don't use that as much. I'll just have I'll just have images open. So right now I'm going to kind of snag a, a middle tone of that of that image. And you can see where I had picked bright yellow before. This is actually more of a, a warm yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and focus on this on this top tank a little bit right here. And uh, try to render this render this up a little bit for you. But since you know we're working underneath the uh, underneath the sketch lines, things can go things can go pretty quickly. And uh, just knowing that I'm going to take these uh, take these features and sample sample them off the car, I know you can get a pretty good idea where your where your dark shadows are, your highlight, and uh, and I'll be able to get in here and create a really you know really nice. A nice yellow underneath, underneath there. Just popping back and forth in between the, uh, in between this, that image there. And now I'm drawing with my, just the regular detail airbrush, which you can choose between either the, uh, the tall profile or the linear profile. Let's see what's, what's that, what's that do? Very similar in their, their effect. But uh, yeah, looking at looking at color reference, especially on, on trickier colors like a like a yellow, uh, because it does it does transition into orange, and yellow can get muddy in a hurry if you uh, if you don't do it right. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a, a reflection on the backside, and uh, you do want to get the you do want to get the highlight right because even if you look at this photo, it's got. Uh, it's got a fair bit of yellow, even in the even in the brightest part. So you want to make sure to to get that covered. And throwing in that uh, throwing in a quick highlight in there. And for yellow, my my sketch lines are a little are a little fierce. So I probably want to go back in here and actually start working on top of. Uh, just for the sake of this of this demo, it's not how I would particularly work on on this uh, on this piece. But for the sake of this guy, I'm going to go ahead and start to start to render this guy, at least this gas tank area, up a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on top of my sketch lines. And I'm going to grab. I've created another layer here that you can see the sketch lines here. I've created a layer on top, and this is where I'll start. Uh, I'll start working in uh, on top of the on top of the sketch because again the yellow is acting is acting just a little too a little too fierce with the uh, with the sketch lines are just a little too fierce with this the soft yellow color that I want to go in here and uh, 
and really render these things out. Now, this may be, this is the point where, you know, you're going to want to decide, okay, am I doing a, am I doing a, a tight illustration or just a loose sketch? And uh, so I've, when you start working on, on top of the sketch lines, you're starting to get into that, that tight sketch slash illustration phase. And uh, as long as you're, as long as you're okay with that from the beginning, that, um, you know, have at it and, and have, have fun. But it is going to be a little bit more time consuming than, uh, than just a rough, a rough block in of, of color. And uh, just, again, going, going back and, and using this to sample those, those highlights and shadow. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a nice, a nice feature, and just good, good practice. That way, you're not, you're not trying to you know, discover, you know, how do I render yellow? You know, it's, it's already, it's already been done. Um, you know, I remember back at uh, you know, taking classes at CCS, and you were, uh, you know, trying to, trying to do all this on, uh, on Canson paper or, uh, or a marker on vellum. It was, uh, it was a whole different experience because you couldn't just. You had to look at a photograph and kind of say, okay, so this is how I'm going to get this and try to layer it just right between on the, the front and the back side of the vellum. And uh, that was, a, that was a, you know, its own challenge. But, you know, working, working digitally, you've, already, you've got, you can have that, uh, that reference, you know, right next to you and you can sample. You've got it with, just with Google or, or Pinterest or something, you've got a vast library of, uh, of photos to, uh, to work with. You know, just you know, work work quickly enough. There's you know, you if you're working on different layers and uh, you're you know, you're working quickly, uh, there's always the undo key, and uh, you know you don't want to get to a point where you're you're really you know going slow and, and you know noodling an area too much. Uh, you just want to keep keep your speed keep your speed up as as much as possible, and even even now I'm still kind of blocking blocking this thing in. I'm working on the same layer, but uh, you know, if I was doing a, a tight illustration, I might actually come in and make a selection around this area and uh, fill that all and you know, work that, uh, that area within a selection like I had mentioned earlier. But uh, for now, just for the sake of, uh, sake of speed, I'm going to be, be showing it this way. But that does mean I have to go back and uh, any race on some area, but when you do that, you're starting to uh, you're starting to cover up those those other those other sketch lines in that uh, in that zone. So one of the other fun things to do, let's say you know you look at this and say, okay, there's still some some sketchiness uh, about it. Uh, going back in there, you know, you can flatten those flatten those areas or flatten the uh, the canvas, drop everything to the canvas, and start to work on top of everything will, uh, will allow you to use uh, brushes like the, the Just Add Water brush, which is what I'm going to do, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this. And uh, if you are going to flatten your artwork, it is, it is a pretty good idea to save it and then save as, go file, save as, and I'm going to call this webinar sketch. Uh, You just go over here, drop all. And now you're you're basically working working on the canvas. But uh, one of the neat the neatest uh, blenders in here is called Just Add Water. You just go to uh, it's under your blenders, Just Add Water, and uh, it can it just just does a really nice job of, of blending blending areas out. So I'm going to come in here and I really want to. You see, uh, this is all real, real grainy, and uh, there's a lot of artifacts left over from the from the sketch. So I'm going to go in here and uh, use that just add water feature to take out a lot of that stuff and, and really smooth out my my highlights and shadows. And you can watch all this. Uh, you can watch all the sketchiness kind of kind of disappear, even 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 in this in this kind of area. Just Working, working the size of that uh, that just had water brush, and uh, you can even say, okay, I want this. 
I want this radius to be a little bit uh, a little bit softer. You can kind of go in there and, and make that happen. But again, if anybody has any questions about any tools or or things that they see, just uh, just let me know. We do have one more question, Eric. Um, yeah. So for correct proportional drawings, do you use only the hard point, or do you have do you measure the distance in another way? Um, let's say correct proportional proportional drawings. Well, there's there's the hard points, but then there's also um, you know then there's also reference vehicles. Like I had mentioned, I I have sketched this over a an, an existing vehicle. And you're right. You know, when you're working with with vehicles and uh, you know motorcycles and especially something like a, a boat, uh, proportion is uh, is key. So if, if you can work on top of something, uh, that's uh, that's key. And a lot of the times, I'll actually start off with a um, with a very simple uh, 3D model in uh, in say Rhino, and uh, just just very basically, you know, add add the uh, you know, just draw some curves or some very simple shapes into uh, in Rhino, and that way I'm able to in 3D uh, get get the proportions right. And like I said, especially if I was to do a um, if I was to do a motorcycle sketch in in 3D that I uh, I know is you know motorcycles in uh, in perspective are are odd, but it can be odd to draw. But uh, boats are even are even crazier. So starting off with good good reference, either photo reference or if, if it's something, you know, that doesn't, it's, it's something more more out there than that, you know, if you can't work over a photo, making a quick 3D model is, uh, is, a, is a good thing to do. And I'll, uh, I'll show you an example of that uh, real quick here. I'm going to go file, open, and uh, let's see, my archive here, and this was a project called Sabretooth from a, a couple of years ago. Shaver to uh, development. Let's see family sketches, refined sketches, and uh, you know this is a this is a fairly complex complex and odd uh, shape to draw here, but you know is, is rendered in the the very same same fashion that I, I just showed you there. Um, but in this case, I, I can't remember if I I took a, a photograph of uh, their existing bike. Or I, I made a very simple 3D model, and I just took a screenshot of it and worked on top. But you know, if this was out of proportion, or the or the rear axle was cranked, it would uh, it would definitely throw the whole thing off. And um, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of you know putting a little bit a little bit more effort into the you know the front end of a sketch. I don't I don't usually, do, especially with vehicles, if I'm going to put the time into the sketch, I want to make it you know as as perfect as it can be, and you know. Silly little things like uh, perspectives can can uh, you know throw off the the believability or the design of the bike, and uh, you know people won't take take it as seriously as it's uh, if it's if it's right on the money. But uh, you know here's a good example of this is the same sketch style that I'm working in right there. You know all the lines are exposed, kind of you know, comic booky or cartoony. And uh, for the same project, they wanted to see one of the bikes done up done up real nice like so here's here's a bike where you know if we and it's a much higher res so here we're showing off the, the carbon fiber texture and uh, and uh, all kinds of all kinds of neat stuff and I'll show that here real quick uh, in this in this uh, workspace I've made a couple of, of custom things uh, I've got my my stitching uh, what I call my stitching pen here which is uh, for making you know seat Imagine making seat stitching, and uh, you know you can kind of quickly see how you can. You might want to go quick, but uh, does make some some fairly nice uh, stitching effects. If you're gonna, if you can get into that, you can kind of see how that works. You're, you're gonna want to take your time with the stitching stitching pen because it uh, it's completely opaque, and uh, you're gonna want to. I'll do it right. I'm just doing it real fast here to show you guys how it works, but uh, get an idea how it, how this goes. So there's the stitching stitching pen. There's also uh, when you're when you are doing a lot of soft goods, having a uh, a good zipper. Oops, having a good zipper pen. Let's see. There we go. 
just do it real big there. Having a good zipper pen would be good to, uh, to be able to add on to a little big. Let's say I want to put the zipper on this, this back end of the seat. Uh, having a good zipper pen is, uh, does come in handy from time to time. And then for adding stuff like this texture here, I will uh, I'll go into my papers library and kind of grab something like this. Uh, let's see which one is this? The fine dots, and I'll grab my uh, let's go blunt shot, and of course do something that's not white. And then let's increase that paper size so you can actually see it. Because this is what I'm pretty sure what I've what I rendered that. Uh, under that with so you go in there with a, a base texture oops no it wasn't it wasn't that it was uh, some kind of a, a fabric looking thing probably this one here yeah this one so, and going using your chalk tool you can use the papers to add uh, add some texture in there you can use darks and uh, and lights if you uh, if you want to do that or the fun thing is to uh, Let's say if I want to, I'm going to make a selection real quick just to show you how this goes. And uh, effects, apply surface texture. This is just a real neat thing uh, where it's actually going to use your paper to kind of render your the area you have selected. And you can you know, play with the amount, picture the shine reflection, and uh, you know, real quickly add kind of a realistic texture to that uh, to that particular area, which can have a can have a neat effect from time to time, but this is about as uh, this is about as intense I, as I usually get with uh, with rendering vehicles and how uh, how much time I, I like to spend on it. So again, this this workspace is uh, you know, it can be you can do some quick stuff or down and dirty or you know get into the the fine illustrations. It all depends on how much time you're you're willing to spend on it. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Pen tool can be. This is where <laughs> this is the, this is going to be the best use of this of this pen tool, and I'll show you right now. See this highlight that runs across this this edge of this fairing here. To, to hit that to hit that highlight, you got to be you got to be just perfect with that uh, with that shape. So using your your snap to curves tool allows you to. perfectly paint along that, that edge. And you can you know, use different thicknesses and, and whatnot, but uh, it just allows for a much tighter tighter way of illustrating and getting those getting those perfect curves and the perfect lines, especially for an illustration like this, is uh, is key. Okay, Eric, we have two more questions here that we can answer real quickly. Um, the first is, how did you apply blending on the yellow parts of your drawing? Oh, yeah, I'll go... Uh, I'll go back to that. Uh, I, again, everything's collapsed on a layer, so I use the uh, I was using the Just Add Water uh, Blender tool. It's under if you go to your blenders, it's at the uh, let's see or no, it's under Blur, I believe. No, blenders, Just Add Water. There it is. Boop. And I, I don't mess with this this brush at all. It's uh, I know a lot of a lot of people. A lot of people use it, and uh, especially for for figure drawing, but uh, or you know doing portraits. But uh, the Just Add Water tool, it's basically like once you've got everything collapsed, and this won't work unless everything's collapsed. Because if you got it on different layers, it'll only work on the pixels of that layer. So you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to have that uh, have that all drop down. So I'm going to have just select Just Add Water, and just basically real lightly kind of go along. And just all over everything, I'm just it's it's kind of like you're you're smearing it all out and blending it really really smoothly, and that's that's what's nice. I've also got if I don't want to really blend it that tightly, I also use the uh, the blur tool. Like let's say I just want to give it a, you know just knock it out of focus just a little bit, just to just knock down the a, a radius or something. I'll use the blur tool. But if I really wanted to smooth something out, let's say I wanted this this uh, highlight here to be you know have a a soft gradient for whatever whatever reason. I'm just going to go along that edge and uh, and just real real lightly just kind of work it, <laughs> and that uh, and that tool does the uh, does the trick. So if I'm if I'm smoothing out edges or I'm kind of going in here and, and uh, trying to 
and trying to dial in a, a whole area. Uh, that just added water uh, key is, is really the key to, to taking care of some of that uh, some of that original sketch artifacting that you see. I mean, you can take a you can take a fairly hard line and just blend it out into, into nothing just by slowly working over that area. You know, you see I've got this hard I've got that hard line hard line right there that kind of makes everything look kind of sketchy, and uh, just by slowly working working the uh, the main color back into it, I can really really take that down. So I would highly recommend uh, at least playing with the just add water tool as a as a blender and as a a, a final um, so I say a final illustration. It, it's it's a kind of a must for your your final illustrations. Okay, perfect. And the final question we had here was just, uh, can you please show more of your finished designs, which is a, a nice way to to end off if you want to by by showing some of your finished work. Showing some of the finished work. Well, uh, are there any particular kind of uh, kind of projects that? Uh, that you're interested in? Is it uh, vehicle or, or product? Let's go with vehicle, similar to the one that you were creating here. Similar similar to this. Um, let's see. Another fun one, uh, there's these, there are these, um, this was a, a company called Sabertooth. They, they did trikes, V8 powered trikes. And uh, so this is, this is a little bit bigger. This, you know, these, these guys are meant to be poster size. So even for sketching this, they're a little bit tighter. Uh, than what I was just working on uh, at fairly low resolution. But you can see the style is, is pretty much the same. And uh, that, that was that same bike. And this is, again, typically how I like to present. This doesn't take too long to do um, versus something like uh, something like that tight illustration I had I'd shown you earlier. You know, this is, this is going to be about as tight as I get. But uh, there was another, some other bikes that we had done. Uh, let's go the archive is it did some stuff for Indian back in the day that uh, that turned out pretty pretty fun. Let's see final images. I think this is it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, so this is uh, the same same kind of thing, but these are, again are a little bit more a little bit more detailed illustrations. Uh, working this is the this is almost exactly what I was doing where we took the original Indian bike and we said, okay, the, for the mild version, we're not going to change the engine, we're not going to change the exhaust, we're just going to do, uh, we're not going to, you know, we're going to use the same, same running gear and everything, same frame, but we're just going to change the gas tank, the fenders, the seat, and uh, and work work that way. So we did some some what we call the mild versions here, and uh, these are actually JPEGs. I think I, this was so long ago, I think I lost the originals are are gone, but uh, we did some. Some ones that are, are wilder, wilder designs where we just basically said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this guy up from uh, from scratch all the way down to the you know, details of the engine. We're not gonna we're not gonna hold back on any of these things. And um, you know, again, these are all these are all you know drawn and, and you know illustrated in, in Painter. And uh, you know, again, going this is a little bit. It's not quite as as tight as that. That really, the really tight saber tooth piece here. It's a little bit softer, um, a little less time consuming, but um, again, still get the uh, still get the point across. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of traffic on, on stuff like that. And uh, let's see, let's see, what's a what's another fun fun vehicle project? Actually, you know, when you're talking about you know crazy crazy illustrations that I've I've worked on in the past, uh, let's go to archive. Let's go to intrepid. Intrepid illustration. Finals. No, nothing in that one. Okay. Uh, cut away. Finals. Okay. This is one of the one of the most ridiculous drawings I've ever had to I've ever had to do. Probably because it was so large of a uh, of a drawing that uh, it would had this guy wanted to be able to be printed as a as a banner uh, and and showed at a showed at a trade show. So this is a, a cutaway view of a, of a boat that, uh, that didn't exist, and uh, he wanted to show all the stringers and all the stuff that goes into uh, into making this boat. And uh, everything you see here is illustrated in Painter. There's no 3D, although I, I wish I had modeled some of the stuff up in 3D. It, it just took so it just took so long. But uh, you know what you want to talk about? You want to talk about crazy? Is the amount of how big this drawing is, and the amount of detail that. <laughs> 
that had to go into this. You know, when you start to talk about the, the wiring, he wanted to show you know how nicely that they route all the wiring and the cabling and uh, and uh, you know all the controls and, and just how quality the uh, this particular boat is and uh, you know showing the cutaway of the foam and the and the seats and you know where where the gas tank was and you know how everything is how everything is done. So it wasn't only this; there was also detailed views that uh, that I had to include. But uh, that's uh, that's about as in intense as I I like getting with uh, with Pharrell Painter. So that's kind of a good segue into our next set of questions. You might want to use a, a, a different painting than this one, as you said, it's it's very extreme. Uh, but people want to know about the amount of time that goes into uh, drawings with this much detail. With this this one in particular here. You can use or, any example of um, any example you want. Oh, this this one because it's so big. This was hours, and I probably had. 40 hours into this thing by the, by the time I was done just because, and then there was a lot of back and forth where he was like, oh, you know, change this, change that, and I'm going, oh my god, this thing is, it's crashing, it's just crashing my system just by, just by working on it. But uh, it all kind of depends. I mean, you, you could be, uh, you know, for, for something, something like this, I could easily spend, uh, you know, two, you know, two days easy. Uh, you know, this could be 16 hours getting a, getting a highly polished, uh, Highly polished uh, rendering going to this thing uh, you know, of this this particular this particular sketch of the saber tooth. Um, something if you're if you're trying to keep it sketchy, it uh, it kind of comes down to how how you like to draw. Let me let me close some of this stuff out. Um, you know, for example, this this particular sketch uh, it probably wouldn't have taken that much longer to you know. To shade it up and, and get get enough definition to where I was was pleased with this for a, for an initial sketch, but um, you know, one thing I like about working digitally is that you can you can really kind of fine tune a design and you can explore uh, a design a little bit more than you would with just pen and paper. Um, you can go back, you can erase, and you can you can kind of indefinitely tweak the uh, the design. And what what happens there is that you spend a little bit more time on the sketch, but uh, I find that the sketches are quite a bit more refined than they would be just by you know doing a, a, a series of pen sketches. So I may have spent two hours working on this uh, you know this this line drawing uh, before then, but there was there was a lot of you know playing around and uh, and tweaking the uh, the, the sketch uh, before I was kind of satisfied for where it turned out. So um, you know there wasn't I didn't sit down and, and sketch out a bunch of options on paper. I just sat down on painter. With those hard points and just went at it, and uh, and uh, you know didn't didn't finish until I I was kind of satisfied with the, the balance of everything and the lines and the shapes, and uh, again it takes it, it sort of depends on how you how you like to work if you're somebody who wants to you know sit down and knock out a bunch of five you know minute sketches and kind of litter the wall with that that's uh, you know it kind of comes down to personal personal preference how you like to work. Um, for me, I, I kind of like to sit down and explore a design. Once I got a theme that I like, I, I can sit down and work it and kind of craft it a little bit more. So those sketches do take a little bit longer time, but uh, I'm, I'm usually more more satisfied with them and, and the ability to, uh, to to work the design a little bit more. Um, and again, doing it digitally is uh, really the only way you can do that. Great. So I, hopefully, hopefully that answered that question. Um, a sketch like this, I would like to be I would like to be in and out of it, uh, maybe you know, four to six hours uh, for a nice sketch. That way, you know, in, in three days you can have uh, three to five nice sketches uh, to present. And uh, I usually, you know, like to, as far as managing time, I like to keep it in those kind of terms. <laughs>